Hey, what's up, YouTube? So listen, uh, I've gotten a lot of feedback over Netflix's Fastest Car Season 2. If you haven't checked me out, make sure you do. It's the first episode. And the first thing that comes to mind to so many of the weak-minded people is, man, this guy is such a douche. He's not humble. Uh, he's very aggressive. He doesn't like poor people, blah, blah, blah. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you haven't checked it out, check this out real quick. I've never gotten along with people with money. They always have a, a something, they got their nose up in the air. And but why, why do you think? I don't know, maybe because they think they got one over on you. They got something better. Well, don't they? Our supercar owner, the way he comes off is why everybody should have money because he's got money. You want to justify why it's okay to be mediocre? And I remind them of the reality of being mediocre and they don't like that one bit. The number one reason I'm successful and a lot of people are not is because they worry about how they feel all the time. Oh, I'm sad, I'm hurt, I'm happy. No one has time for that. All right, so listen, I've gotten, uh, like I said, a lot of feedback, you know, both positive and negative, and it's really an interesting perspective that I want to talk about for a second because a lot of people are really not following why or how things worked out this way. So first off, a big shout out to all the guys at Netflix because they did not make me look even half as bad as some of the sequences that occurred on the show. I got in some serious fights on that show with that guy with the donk, and so it was really, really bad, right? And so they actually cut out a lot of that stuff, so you really didn't see it. Uh, what you saw was a really filtered down version uh, of what really happened that day. Now, one of the things that I wanna point point out is that there's two sides to every coin, meaning there's two, two perspectives here. The first one is that a lot of people agree with me because they're like, yeah, I have that go-getter mentality. I definitely agree with you. I think we don't have time for excuses and it's sad to see that guy's closed mindset. And then other people are like, you know what? Like, I get what you're saying, but the delivery is harsh. You need to be softer with people and so on and so forth. Well, let me just break it down to you in a very simple way. We all learn differently, right? And we all work differently. Some of us go to the gym and we need trainers to push us, push us, push us break us down, rebuild us, yell at us, and then some of us need people who are soft, caring, sweet, and will take in consideration for our feelings and all that stuff. And reality is, I'm not that person. Like, that's just not who I am. I was raised poor, I had no money, and it was true life itself that I learned exactly how to be successful. It wasn't because someone handed me over money, made me feel good about my hardships, made me feel good about those days where I wasn't happy, but instead it was about me having to pick myself up from having a bad day and being like, it doesn't matter, nobody gives a shit. And I think it's so important that we understand that first off, not everyone has to agree with everyone in order to still understand that there are different perspectives to others. Now, there are some of you that'll be like, well, money's not everything in life, and others who are like, money is everything in life. It doesn't matter. It, it, there's no right and wrong here. One person has a right to think that money's everything in life, and the other person has a right to think money's nothing in life. Again, it is only a matter of perspective, and if you choose to believe that money doesn't matter, at some point, life will remind you of how effectively inaccurate you are in the fact that life will show you that if you had money, the situation you're dealing with that is destroying your life at that moment could have been made significantly better by the fact that you have money. And so you have to understand that part. The second part too is that we can all argue that someone should stay humble when they make money. But listen, if you haven't made money, if you haven't made enough money out there to have an opinion on how should people be once they make money, then you don't have five seconds of opinion on how someone should act once they've made money. Once you make money, you can choose how you wanna act. Once you've made money, you can make a decision and say, I want to be an extremely humble person and I wanna spend every penny I've ever made going back and giving it to charity. And you can choose to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. And the same way that you also can't fault someone else who's made a ton of money and wants to go spend all of their money on cars, on, on, on cocaine or whatever they want. It just doesn't matter. What matters is that once you're in a place where you've actually made a choice, once you're in a place, once you've actually decided what to do, 
and you've actually made the money to have the opportunity to make that choice, then you have an opinion about what you do with your money. But I don't think you should have an opinion on any level about what other people do with their money because if you haven't learned to make any, if you haven't gone through the hardships of making any, if you haven't gone through the 10, 15, 20 years it takes to build an incredible business, then I don't think you have any opinion about how anybody else who's done what you don't know how to do should act or behave. And I think this is the problem with today's generation is that dumb, poor people think that their opinions should matter even though they haven't accomplished anything to have that opinion. I think you have to understand that your voice, your opinion is only heard once it's backed by an opportunity to act. Not because you have an opinion, but because you've acted on a similar opinion before and have found success with it. Otherwise, nobody cares. You know, and, and I think this is something that's really important that people understand, even on the show. I think you'd see the dynamic between me and uh, Adriana that was like amazing. You know, she understood where I came from with what I was saying and you know, we got along great and we went through it, had a good time filming the show and then you had other people uh, like the, I don't even know what his fucking name was, who cares, the dunk guy who, you know, just, he, he brings up this thing at the end where he goes, the one thing that a lot of people with money don't have is the idea, they don't have the creativity, they don't have the imagination to build. How do you think we got rich to begin with, moron? Like, you think I got rich because I wasn't creative? You think I got rich because, what, I, I, I didn't have passion for what I did? Of course not. Most wealthy people get wealthy by the baseline of being creative and having passion for the things they're working on. And it's that simple. And if you're too stupid to think that you have to choose between having creativity and wealth, and once you have wealth, you give up creativity, then you're simply an idiot. That's what it comes down to. Reality is that in business, you need creativity and you need passion to find long-term success. And if you can't find that, then, then there is no way for you to get wealthy, especially when starting from scratch. And one of the things I always tell people is when you're narrow-minded and believe you understand how life works, but you have nothing to show for it and want to fault others, all you're doing is justifying why you can't be as good as them. So if you, you know, I used to have a boss I hated at work. I hated my boss. I thought he was an idiot. I thought he was a moron and he didn't deserve the position he had. But you know what? I didn't say a freaking word. I didn't complain one day. I didn't say anything. And you know what happened one day? I got his job. And you know what happened the next day? I actually got promoted over his job. And you know what happened later? I fired my old boss because he was an idiot in his role and I was in a position to do something about it. And one of the things I try to teach people to want them to understand is that your opinion isn't relevant unless you're willing to do the work to make it count. And so, you know, when someone argues that someone who's wealthy should build schools for the less fortunate and yet themselves have never made money, there's no such thing as right or wrong. That's a decision you have to make once you make money. That's not a decision you get to make for other people. And I think it's just sad. It's very sad that such poor-minded people have forced wealthy people across the nation in some places to feel bad about their wealth. I think it is absolutely atrocious because one of the things that poor people don't understand in America, they just don't fucking understand at all, is that when you look at segregation of wealth, this is something you need to understand really well because people do not understand that. When we keep alienating really wealthy people, when we keep telling them that they should be doing this, they should be paying that, and they should be doing, then here's what ends up happening. They will shut off from you. And you know what happens when really rich people prevent really poor people from seeing into their life, being part of their life? Guess what happens? You stay surrounded by a bunch of poor people. And you know what happens? You end up staying poor. And so one of the biggest things is when you have a neighbor that has 10 Ferraris or lives in a big ass house that's eight times the size of yours, be fucking thankful that the guy lives across the street and you're able to wake up to that inspiration, to that possibility. Don't be grumpy or, gr or pissed off that the guy has more money than you or that you don't have enough to fix your roof and he has a 20 car garage. You should be kissing his ass to understanding exactly what he did to get there and what is he doing. Who are his friends? Can you get in his network? These are the things that you don't understand. And a lot of people don't understand that because they've never made money. And a lot of us who have made money, and I don't mean some of you jackasses who have made like 50 grand to buy a car. I mean, so those of us that have made real money and have bought our freedom back, understand that networking, the leverage of knowing people and welcoming 
outside of our comfort zone thoughts and ideas and also understanding where other people come from is significantly more important than hanging on to our you know narrow-minded uh, and very narrow perspective that prevents us from getting rich. And so anyone who's ever had anything negative to say about money needs to understand that money is leverage and nothing more. And how you choose to use that leverage is significantly, in every way possible, in your own hands. Nobody can tell you how to use your money. Nobody can tell you how to create leverage for yourself. You do that. And so the power of what we do is our ability to make money only so we can buy our time back. And so anyone, again, who argues that money is not important is still a slave to it. Try to understand this. We go to work to make money. We build businesses to make money. Why? Because we want to buy things? No, because we want to buy our time back. I own my time now. I choose how I spend my time every day when I wake up. No one tells me, not a boss, not even my business, not my clients, nobody tells me how to run my day. Why? Because I have enough money to not rely on anybody or anything for that matter. So when you rely on money, so someone else giving you a source of it or someone else giving you money because you don't have accumulated enough of it, then what ends up happening to you is you force yourself to be a slave to selling your time for that money. And it doesn't matter that you're doing it in your own business or that you're doing it as an entrepreneur or that you're doing it as a, a, an employee of a company. It doesn't matter. Bottom line is every single person's first level of wealth is to buy their own time back so they can choose how they spend their time. And then when they have excess money to spend because they bought their time back, they can choose to buy nicer cars, a nicer house, and so on and so forth and kind of go from there. But that's really how money works. And if you don't understand that, you're still a slave to the system. And so can you have an opinion about how someone else should live their lives once they're out of that slave system? Then no, unless you two are out of it and perhaps have an opinion because you're friends. Otherwise, keep your mouth shut. It's easier and it's much better for your own future future to be friends with people who have made it rather than push yourself away into a corner and ultimately try to justify why you're supposed to stay poor and nobody ever nowhere has said that there's a certain way to live or another that is more beneficial or effective than another it's a personal choice some of you want to live through your kids want to make excuses why your kids prevented you from being successful that's fine you make those excuses and i don't have kids nor do i care about going out and talking about how I should live my life for my kids. I don't care, but I don't tell you how to be a parent, so don't tell me how to be rich. And I think that's the baseline of it. I'm not a parent, so I don't have an opinion about how to be a parent. And you're not rich, so you shouldn't have an opinion about what rich people should do. I think that's how you need to think about life. And the more you think that way, the more you perhaps will learn from people who have had a lot of success. And perhaps one day, if I want to raise my kids to be poor, maybe I'll ask some of you how to do that. Until then, Keep your opinions to yourself, and more importantly, start working on your goals. Stop actually thinking your opinions matter when you have nothing to show for it. So for those of you that understood the core of this message, hopefully you actually understand what I'm trying to say here and what I'm trying to teach you. And for those of you that want to be pissed and everything else, I love your comments anyways. I always love people trolling the internet. So feel free to add the comments, good or bad, below. Subscribe to the channel. Hear more of my rants about dumb people, poor people, and everything in between. And of course, for those of you that are learning, growing, and actually understanding things from this channel, I appreciate you guys, love you guys. And uh, again, make sure to leave me a comment. Take care, guys.